Hello, welcome to Playground Experiment. First reads number 25. My name is Eric Mead. My pronouns are he, him. And right now I'm just moderating our playwright interviews. We have two fabulous playwrights to introduce you to. Um, before I introduce them, I just want to let you know that uh, this is First Reads Festival number 25. And um, what this process consists of is you volunteer to read these new plays in development. You have about three weeks to read the script. On May 4th, from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Times, we will be doing required reading. This will be virtual. I will be moderating a questionnaire, and you will be giving feedback to the playwrights, and they will take that feedback. It will be extremely useful to them. They will use it to come up with another draft of the play that you read. And then a month later, we will present those plays with actors and do our first Reads Festival. That's going to be on June 8th, a virtual or in-person to be determined at this time. Um, and those are all the dates and the details that you got to know if you don't know them already. Um, I'd like to introduce our first playwright, Oli Corchado. Oops, sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Uh, tell me a little bit about your play. What's it about? Yeah. So my play is El Tiempo Que Tenemos, which translated from Spanish to English is The Time We Have. Uh, it's a pretty clear cut family drama. Um, essentially, it takes place in Puerto Rico in February 2021, um, where a family is coming back together, a family that's been separated by time and distance. They're coming back together um, when one of the family members is very sick. And while the, all that is happening, you're going to see scenes from years past that have led us to the present. Cool, cool. Uh, tell me a little bit about how this play got started. I started writing this play in David Davila's Voices of America class. Um, uh, the the five sentence story exercise, if you guys have taken his class, the five sentence story uh, exercise um, essentially was the first play of this scene. And that's when the wheel started turning for me. Um, the inspiration comes from when I spent about a month and a half in Puerto Rico in February, 2021. And uh, that was the basis for all of this. Awesome, cool. So we're we're entering this piece into this process. What are you looking forward to the most um, getting out of uh, required reading and the first reads? Yeah, well, for one, this is the first play I've ever written. So that's pretty awesome. I'm excited about that, um, but also, uh, I, I get such a kick out of seeing the actors, you know, really dig into things. I'm an actor first and I love being in the process and I, I've worked on the first reads as an actor a whole bunch of times and it's so much fun to work with new, new words, new playwrights, all of that. And uh, I get such a kick out of seeing the actors really taking something and, and running with it. And I've enjoyed so much of that so far in what I've presented at volumes of this play. So I imagine the full length is gonna be even more so. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most. What I'm worried about is that the, you know, I, I, there's some scenes that like, I already know I'm gonna to have to fix, but what I'm most worried about is that there are scenes that I'm not worried about at all. And like, those are actually the problems, it's not the ones. That, so. Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, well, I'm gonna anticipate maybe this thing is gonna, you know, be pulled off and maybe I'm wrong. And maybe this other thing that I was worried about really, really worked. Um, I'm really, really excited to read this. I'm super excited to see it on its feet. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic. Thank you, Oli. Um, we're gonna bring in our second playwright. You might know him, uh, Mike Lesser. Uh, let me invite you onto the screen. Hey. Hi, Mike. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, it's going great. It's good Monday. You know, on this end of the, of the camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's nice to be on this other end. Um, tell me, Mike, um, what are you writing about? What's your play? Uh, this play is called Searching for Fred and Amelia. Uh, and it's just about two people who are searching uh, for something uh, and find out that they're somehow connected and uh, kind of about two people navigating through the world. Uh, weirdly, its timing is in 2017 in Kansas, in the same place that um, uh, Amelia Earhart had her childhood home. And there's all of these Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan references throughout the whole place kind of connecting, again, to people navigating, even though you think they're alone, but they're separate. Cool, cool. Yeah. So how did, how did this piece get started? What, what got the gears turning? 
clearly it's it started from a pge event because that's the theme of this one it started at uh, drop and give me 10 actually i don't remember the number but many years ago and it was the one of the things that had to be it had to be a famous person um and then i had just seen this photo where they were like oh there they are fred and amelia they were found in on this photo with two people just sitting on a dock it ended up not being them um but i was like well what happens if they would and then i just started thinking of amelia Earhart, and then the, the prompt came and Next thing I know, I wrote this play. <laughs> cool, and cool. During the pandemic, I just wrote the rest of it. And it's just been sitting on my computer until now. <laughs> neat, neat. So hot take. And if this is like a spoiler sort of question, don't feel free to answer this. But like, what's your Amelia Earhart survived? Still out there? I kind of, I kind of feel like they're, they're not, they're gone. <laughs> At least, definitely now, <laughs> years later. Um, but you know, the thing is, there was two of them, and that's kind of the kind of the the, the crux of part of the play. Is everyone talks about her, but she wasn't alone. Uh, uh -huh. He was there. The, yeah, he was yeah. the navigator. There were two people on that plane. Uh, <laughs> but the, okay, so poor Fred cool. never gets any any credit. <laughs> poor, poor Fred for, for losing. Um, <laughs> What, what are you, um, you're going to be on the other side of the table for this uh, process. What are you looking forward to the most? I'm, I'm looking forward to delving into it as an artist again. It's like, it's, it, as I had mentioned uh, to y'all in our pre-interview, uh, Eric, um, that I did the first one, uh, number, so I figured number 25 was a good one to come back for. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, sometimes being on the other end and being the critical eye of others for so long, you sometimes lose sight of what your own artistry is. Uh, mm -hmm. So coming back into just finding like, what is the vision that I was trying to do with this piece is kind of exciting and extremely scary. But uh, if I'm not scared, then it's not worth doing. So yeah. Good. Good. Well, I'm I'm really, really happy that we're going to be able to, you know, get you back. Yeah to enjoy this wonderful process, which, um, you know, having been through it myself, I've found enormous value in not just sort of like producing my work, but sort of like figuring out my artistry and my relationship with that. So um, hoping that we can do a great job providing that for awesome. you. Awesome, yeah. Anyways, thank you, Mike. Can thank you all. Back so we're both here. Yeah, let's get everybody back on. Oh. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Super, it's gonna be great. Tune in, volunteer. And we'll sign up and join Oli and I and Eric at Required Reading. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Click the link below. <laughs>